Hi there, everyone. Meteorologist Robert Spetty here with you on today, the 12th of September, 2013. Tropical storm and likely a severe tropical storm soon after, just due to all these conditions out here ahead of this area that you can see just towards the north of Guam. Also in the tropics, so we are watching some heavy rain showers flow across the Philippines here. Seen some uh, thunderstorm advisories in effect there by Pagasa. And there is a stationary boundary still bringing some heavy rain showers across much of central and eastern China, extending over towards the Korean Peninsula into into northern portions of Japan. Well, all these uh, factors are going to have some sort of influence on our developing tropical system. And first and foremost, let's see what is happening with this storm at the time of me making this update, which is right around 1200 Japan Standard Time, so right around noon here on the 12th. Well, you can see it is more of a monsoonal-like depression today. You have that moisture inflow coming in from the south. Actually, special weather statements in effect for northern portions of the Mariana Islands. Uh, you can see that wrapping around, but the center of circulation is not very tight. It's very ill-defined, a very broad circulation, very typical of these monsoonal-type depressions. Uh, what that means in the end, if this was close to land at this time, it would be a big rainmaker, and the winds are far away from the center of circulation. This is expected to tighten up, though, going through the next 24 to 48 hours as it does intensify. But it has all this moisture with it just due to that flow coming in all the way from the west. Uh, even across the Philippines there as the storm does continue to develop. And that's actually going to be a main threat here for southern portions of Luzon and Visayas. You could be seeing uh, some pretty decent enhanced monsoonal flow and the risk of flooding going through the latter part of this week into the weekend because you're still going to be seeing that moisture inflow wrapping into this storm. So that's going to help intensify it, but unfortunately, farther towards the uh, west, you are going to be seeing those uh, heavy rainfall in the Philippines. So at this time, like I said, uh, it is still a tropical depression, but I really would not be surprised if this is, gets up to graded to a tropical storm sometime during the day. On Thursday, the Japan Meteorological Agency continues to expect. And plus, on their 48-hour forecast, they do have this tropical storm, max 45 knots. Actually, yesterday, they had it up to a max of 50 knots. It looks like they backed off in the intensity a little bit, mainly uh, probably because it, it does have that very broad area of circulation at this time. So JMA is not expecting the super rapid intensification they were going to be seeing on Wednesday. So with all of that said, where is the storm system going to be going? Well, first, I want to say I do think it is going to become a typhoon. I do think that we we're going to be having Typhoon Manli. Main reason, it does have some fair conditions ahead of it for development, but also just the significant model development from several uh, numerous, uh, several global models, including the high-resolution JMA model, which I will get to in a second. So where is it going to be impacting? Well, at this time, and similar to yesterday, but I think I'm shifting my center line a little bit farther towards the north, I think everybody here still from the Tokyo area wrapping around the uh, Ogasara Islands and then extending down there towards the southern Japanese islands and basically just south of Naha need to continue to watch this very closely. Do I think it's going to make a due westward track? No, that seems highly unlikely actually. What very well could happen is this storm's going to start to recurve off here towards the north and then a high pressure ridge is going to bottom out on it and it'll start to shift down there towards the southwest. The NAV gem and the JMA and the GFS all pick up on something like this, GFS being super strong. Uh, but then a few of the models, including the Euro, have it just coming off there and no ridge really falls in place and it wraps around there towards the northeast. So let's go with first the uh, most bullish of all these models and that's the GFS model run here at 18 UTC. And I say bullish, I mean it's just going to be getting the strongest and it does look like the significant impact. I'm also Remember, this is the southernmost outlier of these storms. So if you are in Okinawa, don't think that this is the all, end all, and set all of this. But it is a possibility. And also, uh, Kyushu and Shokoku, really, with this GFS model run, are going to get a bigger impact anyways. But as we look ahead, let's continue to look ahead into Monday and to Tuesday. It's just pumping this moisture on shore. It's going to linger right off the coast, according to this GFS model run. And then uh, look ahead into Wednesday, it starts to swing back down there towards the south. And this is what I'm talking about by it's the southern outlier because it actually swings pretty far south going ahead into the latter part of the week in the Wednesday and Thursday and continues to push off there towards the East China Sea. So uh, a very broad area of impact. But the problem with this is that you start seeing an impact here in Kyushu, Shikoku, and the Key Peninsula on Tuesday or basically Monday night. And it's still in that area by Wednesday early in the morning. 
that would mean a very significant flood threat out here. Uh, possibly landslides, especially on these volcanic mountains. Um, those are very prone to mudslides and landslides. And then it's going to come down there towards the south. So this is actually starting on Saturday with the European model. And, well, they uh, have a much stronger system. Actually, it looks a little bit stronger uh, according to their model outlook. Let's continue to scroll ahead here, though, looking ahead into Sunday. And they also have this landfalling storm system in a very similar area. But a very key difference is that it starts to pull off towards the northeast. And then it's going to switch over and head towards the Kanto area. So, yeah, if this scenario was to unfold, um, it's going to be impacting you there in Nagoya, um, the Tokyo, Yokosuka, uh, all right along the coastline here. This would actually be pretty cool for me because I might actually take some time off for work and head out there to the coastal areas and try to get some good footage of this uh, storm coming ashore, uh, especially right here near the Tokyo area. Another factor, though, it is going to be a big rainmaker if this does happen. Take a look at the MSL for the same time period. You can see those widespread showers all across much of central Japan. Even the threat of tornadoes is uh, still a possibility with this. In this scenario, uh, down there towards the southern Japanese islands, you're not going to get much of an impact, some high waves possibly, but... Uh, yeah, that's what it's going to be in place. Now, I want to pull back the picture, and I'll show you why there's two different possibilities. Now, this is Sunday's outlook with the European, and that low-pressure area, or our tropical system, monthly likely, is going to be right here. We have that upper-level trough digging in, and this is what I keep on saying about this upper-level trough. How deep is it going to be going? It's actually bringing a cold surge in and across Mongolia and northeastern China. You're going to see below-freezing temperatures. So... How far is this going to dive in? If it dives in enough where this ridge off here towards the east doesn't want to really block this, it'll just pull off there towards the northeast. That's what happens with the European model. Now take a look at this. Now it doesn't look like much of a difference, but it is a big difference when it comes to meteorology. That trough still is in place there, but that ridge has just enough of a handle on it. So it pushes it off here towards the northeast, it lingers here, and then it pulls back down there towards the southwest. Basically says, ah, that ain't going to happen. It can't flow uphill. Tropical systems, I always say, it, are like water. They're not going to be able to flow up and over a hill if that ridge is in place. That's what's going to be happening at this time. I do think that this is actually going to push close enough to Shikoku and the Key Peninsula to have a big impact. I think that uh, you're going to be seeing a landfalling storm system here. Um, the southern Japanese islands, uh, like I said, there is a possibility you want to watch it down farther here towards the south, but it's not going to be a due west storm. It's not going to come straight at you like this. It'll pull off there towards the north and then wrap down towards the south, which would result in a weaker storm system. So. At this time, if you are out here in this area of Western Japan, that's where my thoughts are. Still could change, though. And I truly do understand this is very, very early. None of the agencies have actually put out a warning on it. So I'm taking a, a very big leap of faith here and just analyzing this on my own and trying to give you the first look warning here at westernpacificweather.com. So, um, yeah, actually, that's a good question for today if you watched all the way through this eight-minute long video. Um, do you like having that very, very early warning, or do you want to wait for the official agencies to come out? Because I can do that as well and just point at it and say this is an area to watch which all the other agencies are basically doing at this time i mean jtwc just says this is probably going to be something but they don't have anything beyond that so yeah please put your feedback down below of what you would like actually um into the uh the coming days especially uh if this doesn't get warned on yet here on wednesday so stay safe out there everybody thanks for watching